Okay, a couple days ago I posted a little video I did, um, and here I'll give you a screenshot of it. Um, and on the left you'll see the original video done by Disney for a, uh, a music video uh, for their new movie called Lemonade Mouth. On the right you'll see the version I made in Blender 3D. Um, not exact, but we're going, you know, just trying to emulate the work just to practice skills in Blender. And today we're going to go over creating um, that scene from pretty much scratch. Uh, uh, it's To speed things up, uh, I have a few things pre-done, basically some of the still images, but I'll go quickly over on how to get them to like that. Yeah, anyway, here we go. Uh, I'm using Blender 2.57. Blender 2.57 Stable just came out about uh, not even a week ago. Um, so let's get started here. Here's our default scene. I also assume that you know the basics of Blender. I'm going to go pretty fast, um, and YouTube only gives me 15 minutes, so I may have to split this into two videos, but I'm going to try to go fast. So, um, sorry if I go too fast for you. This video is more for people who are familiar with Blender. Anyway, first thing we're going to do is, um, I've already downloaded the, um, the mouth, the, the lemonade mouth video, and uh, we're going to import it as a reference video. When I originally did this, I didn't do that. I just took a still shot to kind of get the colors and the look. We're actually going to uh, import the video as a reference video. One of the things this will help is I eyeballed all the um, timing for everything in my original uh, file, which you can also download, and I'll also have this video, this um, blend file available for download. But basically, um, I, de I eyeballed, I said, okay, I think that the camera should move this far at this many frames, and this should be spinning at this speed. We're going to use a reference video to kind of save us some time on that, because it did take me a lot of tweaking to get the signs that come falling down the right speed, because at first I had them going too fast and they were hard to read. Anyway, going to hit uh, T to get rid of that little bar over there, and we're also going to delete the default cube here. Let's uh, split the screen, grab this little uh, crosshairs here and drag over. If you're used to Blender 2.4 and Blender 2.57, they add back the old way of splitting the screen if you wanted to split it that way. Um, we're going to click here and we're going to go up to UV Image Editor. We're going to choose Image, Open, and I'm going to go to where I downloaded the, uh, the original music video temp. And I got this off of YouTube. Uh, Blender doesn't like the FLV uh, file, so I had to convert it to an AVI file. I used FFmpeg to do that. And there we go. This is the first shot here. If we hit N on your keyboard while hovering over that image, it gives you options for that video. We're going to hit Auto Refresh and Match Length the Movie. And then we'll hit N again to hide all that. So now as we scroll through our frames in Blender, you can see the frames matching up in the video there. That'll help us with our timing. Also, we're going to grab some colors from that. Um, just because now, you know, if you're good with colors, you can come up with your old color scheme. Since we're trying to emulate this, I'm just going to grab colors from it uh, here in a moment. But first thing we're going to add is um, our piano keys. And what I did, I just Googled the word piano keys and did an image search. And I got uh, this image here. It had some other stuff around the sides. I have this open in GIMP. I just cropped the piano. Now, if you watch the original video, um, and we'll hit Alt-A here, you'll see that they actually have the keys being pressed on the piano here. You'll see that um, basically they're uh, uh, getting darker. Uh, and you can do that. I, I didn't put that much detail into mine, but basically you would make an animation and use that as a texture. We're not going to worry about the key presses. We're just going to lo load the um, uh, still image onto a plane. So I'm going to hit uh, 7 on a number pad while hovering over the 3D view here. Uh, going to hit spacebar and type in plane to add a plane. I am going to scale it on the Y axis and going to scale it to about the length of this uh, grid here. And I think I'm actually going to scale it in a little bit thinner, like so. Next, we'll drag this out just a bit. And we're going to go Material, New Material, and we're going to set it to Shadeless. Most things in this scene are going to be shadeless because we don't want shades. They're going to be full brightness of whatever image we lay on them. We're going to go to Textures here. We're going to go New. The drop down here, choose image, open, and I'll go to where I have that piano image saved right here, piano keys.jpg. Boom, boom. Once again, I, you can Google search this stuff, but I'm going to share my blend files with you. And 
I always like to package. Click that little icon there, it'll package that image into there. Uh, we'll make your blend file, your project file bigger, but it puts the image right in there so that you don't have to worry about losing that image. It's embedded in your blend file now. If we hit F12, we'll render that out. Hey, and there is our piano keys on that plane. Next, real quick, let's work on the background. This is actually gonna be very simple here. We'll go to our world view here, and we're going to check all three of these. Now, the original video here, you can see it's more of a vignette uh, type effect. It's lighter yellow in the middle and around the edges, it's a darker yellow. We could do that, but just to save time, we're going to choose our horizon color, and I'm going to cheat and click on the image here with the draw, uh, uh, color dropper there. And we'll click on our, our uh, zenith color here. Once again, pick the eyedropper there and choose towards the edge here, darker. And there you can see, uh, instead of a vignette, we kind of just got uh, dark at the top and the bottom and lighter in the middle. If we hit F12, it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough for what we're doing. It's just, you know, this is just again for practicing our skills, giving us a project to work on. Because if you want to get good at Blender or any software or anything in life, you want to work on it regularly. So uh, it's good to do at least like one small project kind of like this a week. So we got the, the piano keys here. Let's move our camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit one on my number pad. We'll move us into front view here. I'm also going to hit five on the number pad to go out of perspective mode. And I'm going to hit control, alt, and then zero on the number pad, and it moves our camera to there. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control, alt, Q to give us quad view so we can see everything that's going on. And just for a moment here with your cursor hovering over here, I'm going to hit control and up, give us a full screen view on that window there. And um, if we select our camera here, you'll notice in, in the side view, it's kind of hard to see the plane anymore. If you hit Z to go into wireframe mode, it makes it easier to see uh, for this portion of the tutorial. But with our camera selected, let's hit G and move our camera right here onto our piano. And we'll hit F12 to see how that looks. Hey, it's looking pretty good. If we hit control and down arrow now, we can see right here what our piano looks like now. You'll notice that the video actually starts up high and if we go forward about 20 frames, it lands down on the keys. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do here is since that's where we want to have the camera at that point, we'll just hit uh, I to insert a keyframe and we'll set it for the location, rotation, and scale. Now we'll hit shift down arrow to go back to the first frame and at this point, we can grab the camera again move it up, watching in the camera view here where it is, and we will actually rotate it down just a little bit. We'll hit I to set a keyframe there, and now we can hit Alt A and you can see, boom, the camera coming down. And if we go frame by frame, you can see that we're pretty much matching that. And in fact, at frame 21 here, where it does, we do have our keyframe, I'm actually even gonna tilt the camera up just a little bit and maybe move it down just a little bit. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Right like that. Let's hit uh, I to insert a keyframe there again to overwrite the last keyframe. We'll hit F12. And I actually rotate the camera, I think, a little too much. Let's rotate it back down and move it up and hit I to insert that keyframe. And we'll hit F12. That's looking better. We're not going for exactness here. So next thing we need to work on, you notice that there is a, uh, a basically a slice of lemon down here at the end. Let's see if we can go further along in the video here. Um, so you can see that uh, lemon slicing. Now in my original video I did, I actually had it rotating counterclockwise when they have theirs rotating, I'm sorry, I have mine rotating clockwise and they're counterclockwise. Doesn't really matter. But the first thing we need to do is create that lemon slice. Also, don't forget to save often, so control S, and I'll just save this under my blender folder here, and I'll call it lemonade mouth two, since I already have this project done once. Okay, so to create that, that lemon slice, we're gonna use GIMP. So let's go back over here to GIMP, and what I did was I Googled lemonade, lemonade Mouth logo and I got this. It's rather low resolution, but it's got our little lemon there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift C 
and we're going to crop this. I have a feeling this video is going to be more than two YouTube videos, but here we go. So we've cropped out that. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up the resolution, because if we zoom in here uh, by holding down control and scrolling with your mouse, uh, you can see that it's very pixelated. We wanna to try to avoid that a little bit, give us a fresher, because we're gonna create a path out of this. We'll go to image scale, and we'll just up this to about a thousand. And we will hit scale and zoom back out, control and scroll out. We can even actually make this a little bit bigger here now and zoom back in. So we need to create a path from that. So we need to select just that, that lemon slice. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to convert the image to a gray scale. So image, mode, gray scale. Then we're going to go to brightness and contrast here under colors. We're going to turn the contrast up pretty far and the brightness down. And we're going to do that so we get kind of a very, very crisp there, just like that. So just play with that. I got negative 80 on the brightness, 117 on the contrast. Now we still have some other little artifacts around the edge here. That's fine. Choose your paintbrush, choose a black color, and just quickly color those artifacts in. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to select our color selector here. And we're going to select a white area. Now I have I've already put this threshold up. By default, the threshold's down to 15. Put it up pretty high, 85 or 90. Otherwise, here if I turn it back down just to show you, we'll put it at 15 here. And if I select the white, you see it, it kind of doesn't select all the way to the edge. And we actually want it to, so we're gonna put that up, as I said, to about uh, 85 or 90. I'll put it back to 85 here. Select in there, it selects a little more of the edge. And then we can do right here, select to path. Boom, and it creates a path. By default, you'll be on layers here, go over to paths. There it is. Right click that, go to export path, and export it as something I'll say OR, uh, which is why I originally called it in the original project for orange, even though it's supposed to be a lemon. And then we'll do dot CV, uh, I'm sorry, SVG and click save. I already have that saved, so let's go to the one I have saved. And what I'm going to do is, uh, let's hit Control alt q here to go out of quad mode, uh, quad view, and then I'll hit, um, uh, drawing a blank here. Oh, now uh, I've done tutorials in the past on importing uh, uh, paths like that. If you go to File, Import in Blender, it um, may not be there by default. It is in this case. If not, go to um, User Preferences, Go to add-ons and do a search for CVG and there you go and just make sure that's checked. Once that's checked, it will show up under import and we'll choose uh, CVG right here. And we'll go to where we have that CVG file. Say, I'm sorry, I keep on saying CVG, SVG. I'll choose that, click import. And there we go, we have the image right there. Um, this is once again the original one I created and you can see right here uh, that I missed some of the artifact when I originally did that. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode, uh, B to box select, select those and just hit delete and delete those. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to in edit mode, A to select all, G to grab and I'm just going to center it up uh, right like that. Good enough. Um, but now if we render this out, well first off let's uh, with that selected, R to rotate, X for X axis, and say 90. We'll go to our camera view here. You can see the lemon slice there. If we hit F12, though, we don't see it. Why is that? Because it's just a path now. If we, with it selected, go over to our path tools here. You can see it's selected as 3D. Choose 2D, and then hit F12, and you'll see that it's rendered out now. Now it uh, doesn't have a material yet. Let's quickly just go to Material Settings, New. Once again, make it shadeless. And then we're gonna say um, Diffuse Color, click here. Now you can come over here and try to choose the color you want, which would, actually that right there probably looks pretty good. If you can't really pick one, you can always just do the eyedropper and once again cheat by selecting the one in the picture, which you can see is almost the same as what I just selected, but just showing you that that's an option since you have the reference image there. If we hit F12 again, Ta-da, there it is.